On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to really get started with Webflow because you're probably doing it the wrong way. Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome to this video about how to really get started with Webflow. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably going on YouTube and looking for tutorials, which are gonna show you how to use the software. They're gonna tell you click here and click there, but then you're gonna try to do your own thing and you're gonna get stuck and frustrated. And that's what happened to me. Now, the reason is you're trying to learn Webflow because you think about this as kind of a, you know, a design software, but it's actually not. It's actually a development software that was built for designers. And so what you're actually lacking is some mental models around how to work with Webflow. And that's what I'm gonna cover here on this video so that you'll be, it'll be easier for you to get started. Now, if you're not even sure what is Webflow? Why should I learn it? Should I even invest in this? I have a full 60 minute class that you can find below about how Webflow impacted my business. What's the difference between this and WordPress and why I like it so much. You can go ahead and check this out. But if you're watching this video, let's assume that you've already made the decision that you wanna get into Webflow, but again, you're struggling. So. Here's a few concepts that I want you to understand. As I said, Webflow is a development platform oriented for designers. So you need to start learning to understand the key concepts of web development, which is basically HTML and CSS, but we're not gonna dive into code. We're gonna talk about the models. So the first model that you should understand is the box model. So everything on the web is actually a box. Let's jump here. So this is Webflow and we'll we'll jump into this in a second. But first of all, I'm just opening up a random website here and I wanna show you that everything that's on this page is actually a box, okay? How am I gonna show you this? I'm gonna right click and do go inspect, which is basically opening up the structure of the page. And just as I'm hovering here over the code, you can actually see what's going on. So when I'm hovering here over the title, which is called H1, you can see it here, you see a box. Now that you can see that this box is actually inside of a different box that's called hero title, and you can see that it's a little bit bigger. And that box is in a, an even bigger box that's called hero tech. And these are just boxes within boxes and everything here is a box within a box. Now, the way that these boxes relate to one another is how we structure things on a web page. So let's jump into Webflow for a second and let me demo this for you. So a lot of thing, times, so this is basically your page here and you can add elements to it from this ad panel. So a lot of times people would come in, they would throw in, let's say a typography, a heading that said, here's my uh, website's title. And then they were like, yeah, but I wanna put it here. I wanna put it here in the middle. Why can't I just grab it, right? Grab it and move it like with my design software. It doesn't work, it's so frustrating, ugh. But what you need to understand is, hey, this is a box and this is a box that's inside of a different box. So you can see it here. Here below we can see the structure. So we have the biggest box on the page which is called the body. And inside it we have now one which is called heading one. So headings are basically telling the page that this is a title. As you can see, it automatically made it big and, and something like this. Now, the, the way that, the reason that this is at the top here, at the top left, is that the way that the browser reads a page is kind of more like a, a Word document where you get started at the top left and you write down to the bottom and not just like how we see things in Sketch or Figma or whatever where it's a canvas and we move things around the canvas. So it's actually a page, again, written down from top to bottom. So if we would, now let's go back to the fact that it's a box, okay? So if you go here to the right, this is basically the styles panel. Everything that you want to, change the way that it looks, you give it a style. And that's pretty similar to how we would work, right, in Photoshop, InDesign, Sketch, whatever. We give things styles so that we can reuse them again and again and we change their properties. Now, the, the thing that you see here at the top, this is basically, this is what's called the box model. So as I said, everything is a box and we have some space outside that box, inside that box. So let's see how this, how this actually reacts. So let's give this a name, it's called a class so that we can edit it. So let's call this title, for example. Now you can see that by default, it has 20 pixels of space outside the, the top here. And when I'm hovering this, you can see it right here. So basically there's 20 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the bottom. If I would add pixels from the right, 
um, from the right, from the left, sorry, you could see that it's being pushed here to the left, or if I'm adding pixels to the top, it's being adding, adding spaces. Now I can start changing the layout. Now remember, this is a box that's inside of a different box, right? So this is body. So another thing I can do is go to the body, right? And uh, tell the body, let's call this body, and tell the body, hey, everything that's inside the box of body, give it some spacing from the top and from the bottom. So now, even if I bring in another title, um, let's say another title that did not get the styles of this one. So here we told this title to have a box that's pushing it, you know, has some space from the top and the left. And this one doesn't have anything on it besides the default, but the outer box, the body box is pushing it as we've, as you can see here with the green spacing. So that's the first concept that you need to understand. Everything is a box within a box within a box. And that's the second, the second kind of concept. These boxes are nested one into each other, kind of like a, a Russian doll, like a Matryoshka doll, right? There is a box within a box within a box. These boxes are named divs as we've seen here. So basically what we can do, and we here you, you see you have a div block. These are kind of the basic, building blocks of the web. So if you're going here and you're throwing in a block, you can see that you have, again, let's give it a style. Again, let's call this box. And then we can give it some parameters. So what size is this box? Let's say we can say that the size of the box is 300 uh, pixels wide and 200 pixels top. So now we have kind of defined the size of this box and we can give it, you know, we can give it properties such as background colors or whatnot. Now, as we said, these boxes are nested within one another. So I can actually go ahead and put this text inside this box. And now you can see it's inside the box and I can change the parameters as I said below the spacing. So here's the spacing inside of the, of the box. So, and it's gonna push in the text that's inside of it. And this text already has some, you know, margins. So margins are the space outside of the box and the padding is inside the box. This title has a padding, a margins outside of it that's pushing it from the other element. And this box has an inner padding that's pushing the content that's inside of it. So that's one thing. So we have the boxes and the boxes are nested within one another, okay? Now the second thing that you need to know about this kind of a nesting structure is that the this everything cascades from the top to the bottom. What that means is that if you give a certain style, right, to this to this box or even this body, all the properties that you're going to give it it's are going to cascade down into the you know the the children of that everything that's inside a box is referred to as a children so let's see if i go ahead and i give this box a property let's choose a specific font for it you'll see that the you see that the font inside actually changed the, the, the font has changed, even though we did not change the font specifically on this heading. And if I take this out, you can see the font will go back, right? It will go back into being a regular one. But if it's inside, it's going to inherit some kind of styling properties from its parent. So in that way, you can start actually understanding, hey, wait, if I want my whole website to have a specific font, then I'm not going to go and define each one of these um, fonts. Instead, let's just go to the, the parent of the page. In this case, it's going to be the body. It's right. It's the box that's outside all of the boxes. And let's go here and define the, the type for the whole page. Now immediately see what's going on. The, when I'm changing the property of body, all the fonts that are inside that box, which is basically all of these, right, um, are inheriting this style. Now you can override the style, of course, but this is how you think about these. The parent always kind of affects what's inside of it. Now these things are also cascading down when we're building responsive uh, websites. So what you can see here at the top is basically different breakpoints, and this is how things are going to look down on mobile. Doesn't look very good right now, um, but basically what we define as specific styles or parameters on desktop are going to be inherited when we go down to mobile. However, we can change um, certain properties. Obviously, you can see that the, it doesn't make sense to give so much space on mobile, or even 
yeah, even here. So we can go here and we can change the different, you know, we can change the different uh, properties here so that things are gonna look better when we're going down to mobile. So I changed some of the spacing and the sizing. Now, note that when I'm going back up, it did not change how the desktop looks. And the reason is, is that things cascade from the big thing, which is the desktop, down to the small thing, which is the mobile. So you can cha make changes which actually override the styles in the smaller screens, but they're not gonna cascade up. They're only cascading down. Now, I know this might be a little bit overwhelming at this point, but I do think that understanding these core concepts of how the web works, right? The box model, nesting elements within one another, and uh, the fact that things cascade down. This is kind of the fundamental thing you need to understand if you want to understand how Webflow works. Because otherwise, let me just go ahead and remove all these things. So Webflow gives you kind of pre-made layout that you can get started with, right? And if you go ahead and you throw that in, you can say, oh, that's that looks great, right? Um, but then you go ahead and you try to change this and you don't understand hey, why, why do things even you know, look this way? Why are they centered? What's, what makes this centered in the middle of the page? Why is this not um, you know, uh, aligned to the top, uh, top left corner, just like Ron showed us in a second? And then you need to understand how these things, so you can see that they're being pushed down, this kind of a box, right? Now you understand that here we have a box called hero. Inside there is a box called flex container. Inside there is a, a div block that's holding. So now you can understand the structure that goes here on the left. And also you can understand if you're clicking on the hero, you can see that they gave it padding, which is the inner spacing of the box from top to bottom. So you know why this thing here, the content is being kind of vertically centered. So you need to understand these key concepts if you want to understand how to move forward and do some more advanced stuff and take control of your Webflow uh, designs. I hope that was helpful for you. Obviously, this is just the beginning. Again, if you want to know if it's worth investing in learning with Webflow, make sure you check the free class that we have below in the link and I'll see you on the next video.